A reading from our Old Testament lesson from the prophet Isaiah. As for the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In our gospel text for today, we see examples of what happens when the seed is sown. The seed is sown particularly amongst everywhere. That is, of course, our Christian duty to spread the seed or spread the Word of God with reckless love and reckless abandon. S spread the seed along and surely the Lord will take care of it. I know that in, in farming, not that I've ever been a farmer, but I know this much by looking at crops, the seeds are not sown in reckless abandon. They're, they're seeded in rows. You want to know how I know that? Take corn. You can see right through each section. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that the farmer didn't go out there and just throw his seed. But that's what Christians are called to do. Christians are not called to plant in rows and then nourish those rows, fertilize those rows, care for those rows, and when it comes time for harvest, harvest those rows. Rather, in the field, we are to spread the seed everywhere. I think more instead of like a farmer, it's more like sowing grass where you throw the seed out as far as you can so that the grass can grow. But of course the grass needs water, it needs nourishment, it needs love, and it even needs protection from, with hay or straw, I guess. Well, in our text, we see that a sower did this. And he, did it, he, he threw the seed so far that not only did it land in the ground, but it also landed on the path, on the rock, the thorns, and then, of course, the good soil. Again, in, in, in today's world and in the United States in particular, we can find that our American society is becoming more and more pagan and speaks more and more ill of the Christian church. It doesn't take much to turn on the radio, the, the TV or, or the radio and hear people bad-mouthing Christians as judgmental. You can see this almost anywhere. Christians are judgmental. And for that reason, we get canceled. Well, I say this to you today, grow a spine. We have to spread the word and not cower down to those who like it not. What does our hymn say? Plant you the word and plant it home to those who like and like it not. And I'll tell you what, it's not easy. That's why I say grow a spine. And I'm including myself to understand that. But it's, it's, it's difficult when someone, when you go to, 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 to share the word with someone and you get nervous because they give a little bit of pushback and then we go, okay, hang on. I'm going to exit this conversation. Because we will get pushback because people cannot stand the word of God. People cannot stand the Word of God because John 1 tells us that the Word is Christ. 
And if the word is Christ, and then the world has rejected Christ, as scripture tells us, therefore it rejects the seed, it rejects the gospel, it rejects salvation itself. But should we be concerned about that? Yes and no. We care for their souls, but we cannot save them. We care for the souls of pagans, but we cannot save the pagan. All we can do is throw the seed. I bring up the rose because we're the ones who plant the even even when, you, when we use uh, mechanical means. We place the seed into the soil and we make sure that they're all taken care of. However, what, this, what our text for today is saying is that we throw the seed as far as we can and then instead of us planting it, it's the Holy Spirit. We throw the seed, the Holy Spirit buries the seed, waters the seed, cares for the seed, grows the seed into a stalk, and then into wheat. And then in the second coming of Christ, He will harvest the wheat and He will make bread from our very bones. Here's the reality. Just as bread is made from many grains, there is not many bread. There's not much bread, but one loaf. Likewise, the church is made up of many grains, many saints, but there's not two churches, but one church. And that includes the church triumphant, where Ward is now bellowing with the angels, with that booming, booming voice. He is, not, he is not a part of the second church. There's one church. And we get to sing with angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven. Why? Because the seed was sown in us. And the Holy Spirit is the one who nurtures it. And therefore, we should repent of our sins as the Spirit calls us to do so. And also be absolved as the Spirit does so. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all, your, of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That seed grows. It can't help but grow because the Holy Spirit is the one forgiving. The Holy Spirit is the one who is saving. And if you do not believe me, then let's take, let's take it up with Isaiah. So shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. When God speaks His Word, He speaks it directly from His mouth. And when He speaks His Word, it returns to Him. It cannot return to Him void. And so I posit this reality. When I preach the Word, I'm not preaching my Word. I'm preaching the Word from the very mouth of God. And when, the, and when the very mouth of God sends forth His Word, it goes to you and returns to God. But it does not return empty. You are collected by His Word. You are made into the church of Christ. You are baptized into the church of Christ. His Word returns to Him and He hears every single one of your names. He hears every single sin that is forgiven. He hears, he hears that you have not only been a seed, but have grown the stalk and the wheat. And He who loves you will return again to harvest you. But until then, we eat of the loaf. We drink of the blood. Together. Not as two churches, but as one church. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven upon us, it does, not it does not return there. But rather, it waters the earth, nourishing it. Likewise, in baptism, the rain comes upon us and it does not return, to, it does not return void. But rather, it brings forth the sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 
This is what we have to look forward to. And this is what we have in our reality right now. The now and not yet. That Christ Jesus our Lord has sprouted in us true grain. And He will harvest us when He comes again. And we will join the angels, the archangels, and all the company of heaven. For we love and magnify the glorious name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who by His Word returns to God with your names on his lips. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.